Hey everyone, it is John Narrell and it is time for my weekly Wednesday call. Today is Wednesday, uh, May 16th. Hard to believe we're at the middle of May already. And uh, today we are talking about failure. So what does it mean to fail? What does it mean when our work environments create a culture where failure is an option? or whether um, failure just simply isn't allowed. So I have to admit that this whole topic when I decided to talk about failure um, took a very interesting turn this week early on as I was prepping for it. So just to kind of recap, so on Saturday, my goddaughter graduated, graduated college, shout out to Lauren in the class at York College. Um, and her class president got up and spoke and talked about the graduates getting comfortable with failure. In other words, being able to take the risk to go ahead and try something and not being afraid to fail. And he used the phrase, uh, failure isn't fatal. So I quickly took out my phone and I jotted it down because I thought, ooh, that would be kind of something good to write about. And so in the context of jobs, in the context of careers, when we talk about being able to fail, it does come back to workplace culture. Right? If you have a boss, if you work in an environment where you are allowed to try, experiment, and, and there is minimal cost at quote unquote failing, then might consider that to be a pretty nice place to work where you are allowed to experiment freely with what it is that you're working on. But I can't overlook the fact that while failure isn't fatal is a nice phrase, there are times when it is. So I don't want to overlook that. And, and so um, I don't know how many of you know this, but I am freakishly fascinated with airline disasters. So there's a great show on the Smithsonian Channel called Air Disasters. And for some reason, I happen to catch an episode every single time before I fly. So, uh, and the Weather Channel does something called When Planes Crash, something similar, but, but both shows follow a very similar model. So they take a tragic event in the airline industry whether it be uh, an, an airplane mis a malfunction or two planes collide or an air traffic controller makes a mistake um, and there is, there is a plane crash and there are lives lost. But the way they do the show is they talk about the incident or the accident, they talk about the investigation, and then they talk about the improvements that have happened in the airline industry because of that accident. So I heard from a friend of mine this week and he was like, you know, well, when brakes fail, it doesn't end well. I was like, yeah, you know, you're right. It, it, it's true. Um, and when planes lose power, it typically doesn't end well. And so those are, those are all true without a doubt. But there is something on the other side of that failure that I think is really, really important to note. We would not have the improvements in the airline industry if it wasn't for those tragic events that happened. And so just kind of want to keep that in mind, right? Hey, want to get, all right, hey, Derek, hey, Kay, hi, Tess and Kyla. Good to see you, David, Andrew, Alfrica. Wow, we got a good, we got a good group today. Thanks so much. So let me just throw a question in here real quick and have you guys comment on it. And it's this. On a scale of one to 10, where one is not at all and 10 is, oh my God, absolutely. How afraid are you to fail? Whatever it is that you're facing right now, how afraid are you about failure? Put a number in there from one to 10. One means, ah, eh, not at all. And 10 means, oh my gosh, I'm scared to death of failing. So there is something in our mindset 
that determines how risk averse or how feel fearful we are to fail. All right. So think about it this way. If you are looking to create whatever that next career advancement opportunity looks like, if you are ready to step forward, to play boldly, more so than you've ever been before, you might be fearful, but you also might be comfortable with that fear. There might be something in the wings that is kind of there as, as a safety net or precaution, or the situation is so powerful that it's pushing you forward that quite simply failure is not an option. It just isn't. You know in yourself that whatever you set your mind to, you simply are not going to fail at. And so with that, how do we actually define failure? All right. So, you know, Webster defines it as an, an omission of performance or something that simply is, is lacking in an achievement. Okay. Well, in our work, our companies determine what failure actually looks like. It might mean loss of revenue, loss of a client. It might mean a performance on your part that is so poor that you actually get put on a performance improvement plan because the company needs to intervene in some way, shape, or form in order to make sure you are able to be successful. Have you ever taken a job and regretted it? Like you got in at that job and went, oh gosh, this is a mistake. I should never have taken this job and gone, I just failed at it. Well, again, that comes back to mindset, right? Because if you think of and seek out the learning opportunities that are there, then did you really fail anyway? If, if your career is this whole long path that you're going on, then what's another page in the chapter or what's another chapter in the book that simply takes you down this path so you can get elsewhere? Uh, sometimes when I work with clients, we talk about lateral moves where they're in a job situation or they're working for a company and the company might be downsizing, they're fearful of losing their job, or for whatever reason, they simply just want to get out. And so they entertain the idea of a lateral. A lateral is a perfectly good solution if that is what helps improve your current work situation. I, I remember taking a lateral a few jobs ago, and it was simply for the fact that I wanted to get out of a job that I was in because I didn't like what the writing on the wall was looking like in terms of an organizational structure. You know, whether that came true or it didn't doesn't really matter. The point of it was I sought out a lateral and was able to achieve it because it opened the door to a new opportunity. So, so in that, was, was taking that lateral a failure? Absolutely not. Nowhere does it ever say, and if you find the book for me, please let me know, but I, I haven't been able to find a book that says you're supposed to jump from job to job and an increase in title and a 10% increase in salary with every single job that you take. I haven't found it, nor am I going to write that book because I just don't think that's how our career paths go. I think our career paths are not linear. They're actually more kind of curved, but perhaps maybe on an upward, upward slope. But if it's, you know, bottom of the ninth, two outs and bases are loaded and you need to get a hit, right? You better might as well just give it your all to kind of get that hit um, than sit there and play a little tentatively. Um, and maybe waiting for a pitch that you really could have probably knocked out of the park. Um, Craig, did I get that right? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Jennifer, exactly. It's not failure. It may just be reaching your goal yet, right? Failure. Another chance at greater. Al Frika, I love that. Absolutely. Um, for those of you that know the author Janine Roth, um, she's written a lot about, um, she wrote a book years ago called Women, Food, and God. Uh, it was kind of dealing with, uh, with food addiction and such. Uh, thanks, Craig. I appreciate that. Um, and so she was talking about her, her journey with food addiction. 
and, and she was talking with her, her counselor and she says, you know, the last thing I want is another AFGO, A-F-G-O. And it stood for another effing growth opportunity. And, and I always kind of like, I love that kind of phrase because I was like, you know what? But that's, that's true in a lot of ways that, that we are looking for those growth opportunities to help get us forward and, and move ahead, right? Um, so I'm going to put a link into, uh, in, into, I'll put it in the post, but then I'll also attach it to Friday's email. But I came across this article that talked about 10 inventions that actually resulted out of failure. So kind of interesting stuff. The implantable pacemaker, the microwave oven, penicillin, the inkjet printer, x-ray images, artificial sweeteners, post-it notes, potato chips, Coca-Cola, and chocolate chip cookies. Um, I'm going to say the last four are personal favorites. Um, but here is the thing about the potato. I'm going to tell you one of these stories. You can read the article, but the potato chip story fascinated me. So uh, the way the way the story is told, uh, it's kind of interesting, right? And it says, this must be the only example in the history of the world where rage benefited the person involved. In 1853, in a New York restaurant, when a customer complained that the fried potatoes were too soggy and thick and repeatedly sent them back to the waiter, the chef, George Crumb, got so fed up that he took the request for a thin thinner potato quite literally. He cut the potatoes into thin slices, fried them, and covered them in salt, and voila, the most favorite snack in the world was born. Viva la potato chip, right? So, so the thing of it is, is that out of something, we get to learn something else something greater becomes of it. And we may not necessarily know the lesson at the time, but the truth of the matter is it is a powerful lesson when our eyes are open to it, when our ears are open to it, and when our most importantly, our minds are open to it. Because, pardon me, when our mindset is such that failure is never an option, we can then move forward real boldly in our careers. So if you think about a time when you may have quote unquote failed at work, what is it that you have learned from that experience, right? So give me a word or two in the comment box right now when you think about a time when perhaps you may have struggled at work or maybe even if somebody unfortunately told you you failed at something or whatever that might be, what did, what did you learn because of it? Go ahead and put a word or two in the comment box for me about what you've learned from quote unquote a personal failure or a professional failure in that. Kay, Kay right, yeah, it is like a leap of faith, right? It, it's about kind of taking that, that moment. Um, I know for me personally, when I decided to leave my job at the end, of, beginning of December and launch my practice full time, um, there was a huge opportunity and a huge risk in doing so. But I felt like I had enough data and enough support and enough resources where um, I could give this a go and play this full out. And I'm very, very happy I did because my lessons learned have, have truly been about connection and patience and a lot of creativity along the way. So let's see what you put here. Vulnerability, absolutely. It is open heart in so many ways, Jennifer, right? That we just seem to get vulnerable in that moment. Joyce, what you needed to learn, right? You know, sometimes life becomes our greatest teacher and we live in the world's biggest classroom. And so what we, what we get to learn is exactly what's put in front of us. Alfreka, opportunity to readjust and realign, yes, right? Because once we get that lesson, we're able to take that step back and figure out exactly what it is we need to do. And more importantly, what it is we want to do. So that readjust and realignment is key, great for that, okay? So you've heard me say over and over again about whenever it comes time for us to create that new opportunity, whatever it is, we do three things. We listen, 
we lean in and we step forward. Uh, I had a conversation this morning with my coach about this. And so, so here, here's how it kind of goes, right? We, we gather enough data. We, we listen intently and deeply to figure out what it is we want to do next, right? So I'm, I'm thinking of a new free offer for my website, and I'm starting to work on that right now. So, so it's about listening to what I hear about the pain points from my clients, what I think my future clients may need in terms of a leadership and career coach, something in terms of guidance. I lean in, right? I lean in to really make sure that what I'm hearing about is, is viable or it's got traction or it's got momentum of something that people might really, really need or want. And then it's the action step. It's about stepping forward. Okay. That action. And, and for those of us in the, the chat room who've gone through IPEC and we, we know our coach program real well, but one of the things we say in IPEC is that um, it has to do with mistakes, right? That, that we never really make a mistake. There could be something on the back end of an action that might be hurtful or detrimental or maybe not go as we planned. But if we truly step forward with our heartfelt intention, we can't make a mistake. No, no matter what it is, we simply can't make that mistake. And so if we can't make that mistake, there is no failure, right? So, so as we think about this conversation about what it means to fail in the workplace, maybe this guy who was the class president at my goddaughter's graduation really had something there in that when we talk about it in the workplace and failure isn't fatal, that if we truly step forward with the best intentions, that we're gonna be okay, that, that our career moves along at the path that it needs to, that we learn the things we need to learn along the way, that we get the growth opportunities and the ability to be resilient, to know what it means to persevere, to just stick things through no matter how bad or how awful they might be, to learn what it means to be tenacious and scrappy, to enhance and grow our problem-solving skills so we know in whatever situation we get into, we have the ability and the resources to figure it out. We get to be creative. We get to offer support to other people that are on our team. We get to be the cheerleader and encourage and pick people up with, with heart and, and good intention. We get to pick people up so we kind of support them along the way. And with that, we ultimately get to figure out what is our zone of genius. And when we get to live in that zone of genius where whether we call ourselves the expert or the authority or the, the, the go-to person, whatever it is, when we get to live in that zone of genius, oh, great things happen. Great things happen for us in our career and how we get to step forward. All right. So any last minute comments, questions, thoughts, observations, uh, jokes. I'm up for jokes. If anybody's got any jokes, uh, <laughs> anything like that. But uh, but I do want to thank you for taking some time and spending with me today. It's it's great seeing so many of you in this room. Thank you so so much. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Thanks, Alfreka. I appreciate that. It's good seeing you. Um, so your challenge for this week is to really be mindful about where you see or hear the word failure in your work life. Whether it be from yourself, from a colleague, from a leader, from the organization as a whole, just to get really, really mindful about what failure um, looks like or is coming across to you. And then really take a moment to figure out whether or not you choose 
to accept whether that failure has an impact for you in your professional life or not. All right, everybody, thank you so much. If you're on the East Coast, um, be well with the storms. I know we've had a bunch of stuff really come rummaging through. And uh, if you are elsewhere in this country, just stay safe and be well. And let's gather next Wednesday at one o'clock for another conversation. I look forward to seeing you again and um, make it a great day, everybody. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.